Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. We have the ZX81. It's still connected to the bench, as you can see. Um, but today, we're going to shift from the CRT TV to the LCD TV, but unfortunately, the picture is absolutely abysmal. It's quite hard to tune it in at all and get it to sit stably. Um, and you can't quite see it in the picture, but there are some vertical banding lines that are very obvious and very awful. These artifacts are terrible once you see them in person. And if you look over to the software defined radio view, I had an awful time trying to tune into this. It really isn't a signal that lends itself to modern televisions. So I do have from ZX Renew this particular board, which is a composite out amplifier, and I'm going to be fitting that into my ZX81 today. Time to make the magic happen. I've already loosened the screws of the case, fortunately. And looking at the instructions for this, this is completely independently of the operator. So it's time to make the magic happen. Looking at the instructions, fortunately, the ZX8 CCB PCB works independently of the onboard modulator. So initially, we only actually have to just wire it in and we can solder a phono port to the board itself and test this before working out how we're going to incorporate this. So we have loads of options. Some options, of course, are to cut the case. And if you look at your ZX81, especially if you hold up both sides of the shell, you'll see that there is a cutout here. And I don't know if that was for maybe a North American model or some other model. There was definitely a second hole here for another slot like that. So potentially you could use one of these behind there. You could also just keep a flying lead uh, just coming out of one of the various holes and slots so that you can just have a secondary um, connection for your composite out. You could also internally fit a switch potentially so you could have it wired to the monitor, modulator and maybe that switch could control if the modulator is running or the PCB is running. So there's all sorts of things. But for us though, let's just get straight to it and start soldering in the board and just test it as is because frankly I want to see it working. Just do as I say, don't do as I do, 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 do. Read the instructions. Flip this over carefully like that. Okay, so now we have the board here. I'm gonna take our phono connection. And black is still ground. No problem, look, there you go. Um, and all we need to do is then plug the wire from my television, which should be that yellow one and we can power it on. You can see it's working, you can see the run down there. I'm going to use this uh, trimming tool that I've got from something else, but it's a plastic handle with a very small metal blade to adjust the two little trim pots that are on the PCB. So we're going to start having a twiddle. Oh, too much. Let's go. Oh, hello! That is pretty fantastic. So that was the trim pot on the edge of the board the one that's just above R3. Shift print, hello, space, shift print, 20 go to 10, run it. Oh yes, that is brilliant. Just where you might want it. I think you don't want it too, too fat looking or too thin looking. Let's just get it spot on. If you ask me, the advantages are so obvious that I'm not even going to consider any other option other than have the output coming out of the modulator. I think that this is ridiculously good and any CRT telly that you're likely to have is also going to have a composite input anyway. So let's just get to work on this. That is great. So that's all wired in as we want. But what we really need to do, and we're going to be very careful of that keyboard since we only just replaced it. Uh, I've got the multimeter ready and the lid off the modulator and the reason being we need to figure out the pinouts and we do know a video modulator which doesn't have sound is a very simple affair. It's only got a few things. It's going to have ground connection, a power connection, a video in connection and a modulated output connection and we can already discount the modulated out connection because we know 
that's going to be the photo on the edge and we know which is the ground so we need to figure out which is the video and which is the power so you will hopefully just about here we're going to go to the heatsink of the regulator just for fun and we know that it's normally the middle pin there you go that's the middle pin input ground output on those regulators and we can hear that's the chassis of the modulator good and the next pin we need to figure out then is the power pin so input ground output so we're going to go to the output pin here and we're going to try um this line here there you go that is this craziness here so this is the power coming into the modulator and you can see it's being isolated with some sort of baker light type material so that means then that the video signal is there you can see i've made a modification and on the screen is a rock solid picture like i showed you earlier however in here now we've configured something a little bit different so you can see i've actually moved this pcb onto the top in fact let me unplug this there's no need to have it plugged in because you can't see what i'm up to but just to show you that the composite lead is plugged straight into the modulator now what i have done and we're going to do a tidy job of this in a second i actually looked at the pinouts and figured out oh okay the uh, this is actually just connecting straight to the video out pin on the ula which happens to be uh, the one that was going into the modulator right here anyway the power is just power you can get that anywhere from the top i actually tapped the ground from the regulator as it was convenient and what i did is i wired in the video out from the amplifier board into uh, just directly straight to the phono out and that's fine it just lives in tandem with that so just to show you the setup i have the zx81 here connected it has a phono lead with the composite going to this television and as you can see it's absolutely fine with that happy as larry and i'm happy as larry because that's a pretty damn good picture now you can see what will happen when i unplug that composite lead i'm being a bit ginger because it's all open and then i plug in the rf lead <laughs> Also very much happy as Larry. With our newfound knowledge, I think it's time to tidy this whole thing up. My game plan is to stick the board straight on top of the modulator. I think there's potentially enough room in the case to do that. In fact, I'm going to go for broke and assume that there is. So first thing I need to do is make sure that's, that's kind of the orientation I want. I just want to make sure now that that brown wire has enough to go through the case and connect to where I need it to connect. So I'm going to snip that right here and there you go that's a nice looking solder joint that's not going to go anywhere fast so let's pop the lid on now let's hope this all fits when we're <laughs> all said and done this 3m tape's quite tenacious so we'll stick that slap bang in the middle of that modulator and it is possible now that i could put it in the case and see if it's going to fit but i'm going to go for broke filling up the viewfinder boom just like that that's all it takes you do this accurately as well make sure all your wire lengths are nice again depends on if you want to take a picture for instagram i suppose i mean that's <laughs> no one else is ever going to see this but then you might take pride in your work i don't know how much pride do you take in your soldering it might be a lot more than me i'm purely functional just want to get it working but you might be, oh no, I like the artistry of it. And if you do, that's fine by me as well. So I'm just applying it there, pop the end. And I hear you shouting, Andrew, what will you do? What will you do if the lid won't fit <laughs> with that amplifier where you've positioned it? And I really am not worried about that because there seems to be so much room under here that you could um, certainly find a way to, to somewhere to accommodate this board, even if it's just floating in the case. It's not very heavy, um, and it could certainly just live live somewhere in the case. So that appears to be everything hooked up. Let's power it up and test this before doing anything else absolutely fantastic that all works as expected now we just need to see if it's going to fit into the case just that last fun job of getting the keyboard membrane back in 
I'm a little bit worried. I've got one more mod to do on this unit. We're waiting for the parts to come, but we'll have that 16k of RAM. And that will require the keyboard to come out for a third and hopefully final time. So let's hope it survives that. I'm sure it will. It feels good of quality that it's going to. If you're mounting your board, mount it towards the back edge of the modulator because there's actually even more room. You can see there's a slope where it goes up. If you mount your board further back, you'll hit that slope even more and there'll be definitely no chance of anything getting snagged. We put this on. This is the, the moment of truth really where the rubber meets the road, but that fits absolutely fine. You can see there's no untoward pressure on the case. So we can just put the screws on. So the final test, you can see you have the composite output to your digital TV or plug in the other one, the analog output, the RF output to your analog TV. So that about wraps it up for this bad boy for today. Next video, we'll be looking at adding the 16 K internal expansion to this. And I think pretty much that will have maxed this bad boy out as much as it needs to be for now. Hope that's been of some use to you as ever. Thanks for watching. Bye.